April 15th, 2000, they fly you out to Hawaii, Super Brawl. You're the main event against Miguel's favorite fighter, Romina Sato. Yeah, I didn't know, Miguel, I didn't know that was your favorite fighter, man. Now I feel betrayed. Um, oh, no, 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 no. My, my, it is his favorite uh, fighter, 100%. Uh, I, I believe he's the first pound for pound number one guy. And part of it is is getting through someone like you, unfortunately. But I, I know I know that this fight hurts you because you tell it. Yeah. You tell your story about it because but it not hurt you in your career, but hurt you inside. Like I know, I know, you know, you wanted this one back. <laughs> yeah. Um there was there was a lot that um so I was friends with Tito Ortiz at this time too. Um and this was, I'm, I'm fighting Ruman Asado. He's a guy I look up to, a guy I have a whole lot of respect for. Um, I think he's amazing, but he's one of those names that, that's in Japan that I'm like, that's that's what I'm shooting for. That's what I want. I want to get over there. I want to fight these guys, you know? And the opportunity comes up in Super Brawl. And, um, but it's at 150, it's at 70 kilos, I believe. 154. Is, yeah, 154.7 or some shit like that. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I don't, I never cut weight before, you know, um, I asked Tito. So I reach out to Tito Ortiz about it and he's like, you know, this guy's been doing it forever. So, and he's, he's, so this is something like, I, I, I didn't understand at the time as I got to give you a, another short story on Tito. He's, he's a heavy, he's a light heavyweight. He's like 200 and something pounds. Right. So I, I was sick one day and I called him and I'm like, hey, man, like, he, we, sorry, he called me and we were talking and he's like, you sound bad. I was like, yeah. And he's like, you should do this. Like, take three packs of Theraflu and pour it in one cup of water and drink that. Right. And um, I did that. <laughs> and I slept for like 20 hours. Right? <laughs> and then I was going to die. <laughs> right. I was like, I was like, so like, I was like, Tito, man, like, I, like, I did what you said, but I slept for like almost the whole day. And I just realized now. It's probably because of the weight difference. Like, yeah. like, you don't give, you know, the same amount of medicine to a baby that you give to an adult. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of like that. But anyway, like that came into play also. Like that that was after the fact. The, 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 the therapy thing came way after the Zuma Nasato fight. But like, just thinking back on it, because with the weight cutting thing, he's like, you know, he tells, I don't, I don't know about sauna suits or whatever. He's like, but he's like, you get a trash bag, get a big trash bag, tape it up around your waist, one on your legs, each leg. And then you just, you just work out on those things, ride the bike in the sauna and do all of this. And you can do that. You can do that in a day. You can do that in a day. I had to lose like 15 pounds. This is my first weight cut, you know? Well, oh, how much did you walk around at? <laughs> I walked around, I walked around at probably like 165, but like I retained water after flying and flying to Hawaii was a long flight. So I was a little bit heavier, you know, um, and I only got there like two days early. So I was a bit heavier also going into that one. And um, yeah, I had to cut like 15 pounds a night of the fight, night before the weigh-ins, I'm sorry. What? And um, like my girlfriend at the time what? was with me and she's the one helping me cut weight, you know. I'm, I'm take, Also, I'm taking diuretics, like I'm taking X-lax and, and these other things to, to try to get, this is, I don't know anything. Um, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't wrestle in school like wrestling in texas was in houston it wasn't a thing in dallas it was but in houston like it wasn't what? even in schools when i was a kid i don't think um it wasn't in my school and um yeah so i'm wearing this plastic i'm in the sauna in this plastic i'm riding a <laughs> bike in the sauna um um doing all this this crazy shit i'm taking diuretics i got diarrhea the morning of i get on the scale i'm still a couple um a couple kilograms over and oh this i'm fighting room Asado, so they're not giving me any leeway you know like you got you got to cut it you got to lose that weight so i go back and put more stuff on and i go in there oh. and, um, i'm just i'm just die. i just feel miserable like crap. i feel miserable but i'm also doing this by myself you know like i'm doing this by myself with the help of my girlfriend like my coach isn't there <laughs> you know? he's not there <laughs> he's 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 in hawaii doing his thing you know, with, with, with someone special to him. Right. Um, so yeah. That is, was, that is your girlfriend, is your girlfriend just saying, just don't lose. That's what mine would have been saying. It's okay. You'll be all right. Just talk to them. They'll let you do it. That's not how it works. Uh, you know, and, and man, I mean, you know, it's amazing to me. You'd made to this level without really having any weight cutting experience because 
I mean, ourselves and our team, if you're going to cut weight, we don't let you do it the first time you make weight. You have to do it a month out and then get your, because the more you do it, the easier it gets, you know that. But I mean, you had no idea though at the time. So man, I, you're fighting like, I've never seen anybody cut weight for the first time and win the fight ever. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, that, that didn't go well for me, man. I was, um, yeah, I was, I, I was, I had a hard time. And then finally, when, you know, after getting on the scale, clearing the weight, was able to eat, recover, I still didn't feel like myself, you know, but I'm still pumped. I'm excited. I'm fighting Ruman Asano. This is like, this is a big deal for me, man. This is huge. This is huge for me. And I, um, we get out there and the fight starts and it's nuts. Like it's on fight pass, but the video quality is not the best. So you have to kind of pay attention. But here's what happens. Woman that comes in and he shoots to tie up with me and I stick a jab, right? And the jab hits him and it pops him, boom, and his head turns over. And as he's coming forward to tie up with me, he headbutts me unintentionally, right? It oh, does, doesn't you had a huge welt on your head. Yeah, I had right no idea head. where it came from. So like I throw the jab and he's closing the distance and he pops, he pops, he pops me in the head, right? I drop to my knees. Like my brain is still not, not back. Cause I cut weight, you know, I cut weight all along. So my brain is still real fragile. So I drop to my lean to my knees and then I, I get up and he jumps on my back and I just climb onto the ropes and I'm holding onto the ropes and I'm not there. I, I don't remember what's going on. And then all of a sudden his arm comes around my neck and he's fighting and I'm one hand under one hand over the ropes and his arm comes around my neck and my instincts kick in and I start reaching for that and I start fighting on it, pulling on it. He extends and stretches me out, pulls me back. And as I'm pulling on it, I'm falling back and the rope peels one of my arms off. And um, when we hit the ground, he sinks it in and chokes me. And um, I tap. Um, I only know this now because of watching it on tape. Like, I don't remember any of this, right? But the referee, oh, the, the referee's screaming the referee. at me. Let go of the ropes. Let go of the ropes. And the referee's, for me, like, of course, when I, especially when I was younger, this bothered me. Um, the referee's <clears throat> standing on this side of me. Um, he's a ref. And he sees, I don't know if he sees it. I think he sees this knot on my head that's bleeding. And, um, but he's telling me, let go of the ropes. This guy isn't throwing a punch. Why do I have a knot on my head? You know? Yeah. Um, I'm sh but then, you know, it's happening fast. You can't really think about that. Anyway, um, after the fight happens, my, my, my Rumina gets up, he goes back to his corner. He comes over to my corner to, to shake my hand. And I kind of, I reach out to shake his hand, but I, I miss, I'm just like, I'm not there. I'm like, and um, my corner, my coach jumps up on the apron, shakes his hand and then jumps back down off of the apron. You know? Like <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm just so, world by myself. <laughs>